We're going to go ahead and talk about matched pairs hypothesis testing. What you need to think of here is before and after results. For example, we could ask the question, do freshmen in college really gain 15 pounds their first semester? You've heard of the freshman 15 myth. Or does a certain drug treatment reduce pain levels in their patients who take the drug? Or does low fat, does a low fat diet help reduce cholesterol? In each of these claims, we would test them by analyzing the average difference between each before and after data value. Each of the before and after data values are matched because they belong to one person or one subject in the study. Our goal for this video is to perform a hypothesis test or construct a confidence interval estimate for the mean difference in paired data. Note that this is not the same as analyzing the difference in two population means, which we've already done. Let's do an example of a matched pairs hypothesis test. Suppose an anatomy student believes that a person's left pinky is always longer than their right pinky. Test this claim at the 0 0.05 significance level. In order to test this claim, we would need to select a random sample of volunteers and measure their left and right pinkies. So suppose we get this data here. We've randomly sampled 10 people. So we have n equals 10 pairs of data. And we've measured each of their left and their right pinkies in millimeters. From that data, we can calculate the difference in each pair. We call that difference little d. So when we look at our first pair of data, 55 minus 54 means that the little d for that pair is 1. In our next pair of data, we have 59 minus 59 means that their difference is 0. In other words, this person's left pinky is the same length as his right pinky. Our next person has a left pinky that is two millimeters longer than the right pinky. And our fourth person here actually has a left pinky that's shorter than the right pinky. So its little d value is negative one. As long as we're consistent with the way we subtract each of these data value pairs, having negatives and positives is, it makes sense, it's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and find all of the differences for each pair of data here. From all of these values of little d, we can calculate some sample statistics. So the first thing that we can calculate is what the sample average of these 10 d values are. So we call that x bar, but we're gonna get a, a subscript of a little d to represent that it is the sample average of the differences. And so when I throw those numbers into stat disk or I add them all up and divide by 10, I get this value to be 0.6. So the sample average is 0.6. What does that mean? That means that of these 10 people, their left pinky is 0.6 millimeters longer than their right pinky. We can also calculate the sample standard deviations of the differences. And when I calculate that number using StatDisk, I get 1.07. Now the reason, the whole reason that we wanted to calculate these little d values here, and then go ahead and find these sample statistics, is to get our test statistic. Our test statistic is going to be a t-score because we are using the sample standard deviation and not the population standard deviation, and we are estimating the mean. So that's why it's a t-score, and it should look pretty familiar to you. It's x bar, but this time it's x bar sub d, minus mu, but it's mu sub d, so the claimed population mean of the differences, divided by the sample standard deviation of the differences over the square root of the sample size. In our problem, this will be 0.6, minus zero. Now, why is it zero? Why is this claimed value here zero? We'll talk about that in just a second. Divided by the sample standard deviation, so 1.07 divided by the square root of 10. And so our test statistic here is gonna be 
So now in order to throw this into a hypothesis test, we need hypotheses. Maybe I should have started with that. So let's think about what our claim is in order to identify these hypotheses. The claim is that the left pinky is longer than the right pinky. So if we think about that claim in symbolic notation, we're saying that the left is larger, greater than the right. Now, what did we find when we found all of these D values here? We found the difference of the left and the right. In other words, we found left minus right. So if we subtract the right length from the left length, our claim is saying that that difference will be positive. So in other words, the mean of all of these little d's, of all of these differences, mu sub d, the mean, is going to be greater than zero. This is our claim in symbolic form. So now let's go ahead and put this claim into a set of hypotheses. So noticing that uh, this claim does not have an equal sign means that our claim is actually going to correspond with the alternative hypothesis. So mu sub d is greater than zero. I'll go ahead and put our yellow arrow there to remind us that's our claim. But the alternative, the null hypothesis is what we assume true until proven otherwise. And so in this problem, our null hypothesis will be that mu sub d equals zero or is less than or equal to zero. Either one is sufficient. So there's our hypotheses. So now let's go ahead and return to our test statistic, right? This guy right here. So with that test statistic, we want to go ahead and calculate a p-value so that we can come to a conclusion. So with our test stat of 1.77, here's a picture of the t distribution with 9 degrees of freedom, right, because of our sample size was 10. 1.77 is somewhere in this right tail. Now, if we look at the alternative hypothesis here, we have a right tail test. So we are going to color in everything to the right in this distribution of 1.77 to calculate our p-value. So that colored in area right there is our p-value. And again, if I throw that into StatDisk with nine degrees of freedom and our t, our critical t value of 1.77, we get a p-value of 0.0557. So now we want to take that p-value and compare it to the significance level alpha and determine if we are going to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So from the previous page, we know that the significance level is 5%. So which one is bigger, the p-value or alpha? Our p-value of 0 0.0557 is greater than the significance level of 0 0.05, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now I rewrote our claims over here. So what does it mean in the context of the problem to fail to reject the null hypothesis? Failing to reject means we are not rejecting this statement right here. So in our brains, we can think, okay, basically accept the null hypothesis as true which this is not our claim. Our claim was the alternative hypothesis. So we, if, if we are not rejecting the null, we cannot be supporting the alternative. And the alternative was our hypothesis. So we do not have enough evidence to support the claim, this claim right here, the alternative hypothesis, that your left pinky is longer than your right pinky. There is insufficient evidence to support the claim that your left pinky or a person's left pinky is longer than their right pinky. So let's go ahead and look at what this looks like on StatDisk to uh, help you finish these problems because you don't have to find the test statistic by hand and you don't have to find the p-value kind of by hand either. If you go to hypothesis tests and then you go to mean matched pairs, right, not the independent, one, but the matched pairs one. Uh, you can have both of your columns of data in whichever columns you like, and then you tell it which to compare, which two to compare. You set your significance level. Here we have your alternative hypothesis. So this is H1. And so we said that mu sub D was greater than zero. So that's the, our choice. When we click evaluate, we get all of this information. We get our sample size. We get our mean of the differences from our sample. We get our sample standard deviation of the differences. But most importantly here, 
we get our test statistic, which is right there, and our p-value. Our p-value is really what helps us make the conclusion uh, in this problem, right? Because without the p-value, we don't know if we should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So this all can be done in StatDisk pretty easy. So here's what the problem looks like if we do just a pure confidence interval construction using, again, column one and column two for our data. So again, this was our, our left pinky length and our right pinky lengths. I'll go ahead and create a 95% confi confidence interval. We get those same statistics, the N, the X bar, and the S. You get your um, critical value and your test statistic um, and a P value, um, but this would be for a different uh, significance level. So what we're really looking at here is this 95% confidence interval. We already did the hypothesis test. So we have sandwiched mu sub d, right? That's what's in the middle here, the mean of the differences to be between negative 0.169 and positive 1.367. So we're saying that the average difference between a person's left pinky and their right pinky is between negative 0.169 millimeters and positive 1.369 millimeters. So what are some conclusions that we can make about this interval? First of all, we can always get do the given easy generic conclusion that talks about our confidence in the mean of the difference, differences being between these values. So we are 95% confident that the mean of the difference in length in pinky, a person's pinky length is between, between their left and their right is between negative 0.169 millimeters and 1.369 millimeters. The next conclusion that we can make is because zero is in this interval, right? It goes from a negative number to a positive number. So zero is somewhere in there to estimate the mean of the differences. What that means is that it is possible that a person's left and right pinkies are the same length. The final conclusion that we're going to come to is that this interval is a little bit heavier on the positive side. Yes, it does contain negatives and positive values, but there are far more positive values than there are negative values in this interval. What does that say about the relationship between a person's left and their right pinky? Remember how we defined the difference, that little d difference? We defined it as left minus right. So if there's more positive values, really, uh, this is what the hypothesis test was getting after. If there are more positive values, that means their left is larger or longer than their right pinky. So we might say something like, since the interval contains more positive values than negative ones, right? And I actually drew the interval for us here. So this is the low end of the interval, negative 1.69 or negative 1.7. And this is the high end, 1.37. So if you notice where zero lives in this interval, it's way closer to this end of the interval. So you can see the primary positive values here. So it is not unreasonable to assume that people generally have a longer left pinky than a right pinky. We actually saw that in the hypothesis test too, because our p-value on the previous page was so close to the significance level, we almost didn't fail to reject the null hypothesis. One more thing I'll point out about this interval, this confidence interval here, is that this 0.6, you can see it's right there in the middle, right? That's how we construct this confidence interval. This is our point estimate. That's the middle of the interval. It was our sample mean of the differences. And then this distance right here would be our margin of error, E, and that same distance would happen on this side of the interval. What we're doing with a confidence interval is we're just trying to estimate the average of those differences, and we're saying it's somewhere in between this number and this number, and that's what's we, that will, is what we consider uh, usual or common, um, at least at the 95% level. So let's do a little recap of all of the notation and the language that we saw as we went through that matched pairs hypothesis test. First of all, a bit about our notation. We were introduced to the notion of a little d, and little d 
represents the differences. You can think of this really as our data. This is from our data. And it is the piece of data that we use to construct our, our test statistic. The other piece of notation we learned was mu sub d, which represents the population mean of the differences. We still have n, our sample size, but that represents the number of pairs. And x bar is still the sample mean, but we put a subscript of a d to represent the sample mean of the differences. And the last piece of notation we had was the sample standard deviation of the differences. So moving on from notation, let's go ahead and talk about the hypotheses that you could possibly see in a matched pairs hypothesis test. The first set of hypotheses you could see would be if the null hypothesis said that the mean of the differences was equal to zero, and the alternative hypothesis would then state that the mean of the differences is different than zero or not equal to. In that case, what you're thinking about is the before and after um, are the same for the null hypothesis. So in other words, here we would say the left pinky is equal to the right pinky. That's why we get the equality sign. And in the alternative case there, we would be saying that they're different than each other. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's less than or greater than. We're just saying that the left and the right pinky are not the same. They're not the same length. Um, we don't know which one is longer. We're just saying that they're different. The second set of hypotheses uh, would say what we just saw in this test, and that is that the mean of the differences is positive. So the null hypothesis would say that it is not positive. It is less than or equal to zero. Again, this was what we just did. So here we're saying the left is longer than the right. So the before is larger than the after in order to get a positive value here. Uh, whereas the null hypothesis would be saying that it's just, it's not positive. The before is not bigger than the, than the after. Maybe they're equal or maybe the before is actually smaller than the after. That's how we would get the less than symbol. And then the last possible hypothesis set here would be when the alternative hypothesis says that the mean of the differences is less than zero. In that case, then the null hypothesis would be greater than or equal to zero. Relating back to our pinky problem, here, if the mean of the differences is negative, less than zero, we're saying that the left pinky is smaller than the right pinky. The before is a smaller number than the after when we subtract. And the, the null hypothesis in that case would be saying that the before is not smaller. Maybe the, for, the before is bigger, or maybe the before and after are equal to one another. So next step in the process is to calculate our test statistic. And to calculate the test statistic by hand, you're gonna need the sample mean of the differences from your data, your paired data. And you're also gonna need the sample standard deviation and the number of pairs of data that you have. And our test statistic is a t-score. So then we go ahead and plot it on a t-distribution. Remember the degrees of freedom here are equal to n minus one for the degrees of freedom. So we plot our test stat t wherever it is, maybe it's in the left tail or the right tail, and then we calculate the p-value. So just for the sake of example, let's say that it's a right-tailed test. So this area is our p-value. And the conclusion for whether or not we reject or fail to reject, the null hypothesis is still the same. If our p-value is less than alpha, the significance level, we will reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is greater than alpha, the significance level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis.